Welcome to Khao Lak, on the west coast of Thailand. Khao Lak is quickly becoming a popular tourist destination in Thailand. It's a little more rural, and it sits right on the Andaman coast. Today, I'm going to be taking you through the highlights of Khao Lak, and hopefully showing you why it's such a great holiday destination. Our holiday rep referred to this area as Khao Lak Centre. There are a lot of restaurant choices, as well as massage parlours, laundrettes, and mini marts. My top tip for Kaolak Centre is to head towards Bang Niang Market. That's where most of the shops and restaurants are located, not on the main road. I noticed a lot of empty shops on the main road, and given that Thailand was still recovering from the COVID pandemic at the time of our visit, in late 2022, that might be why. In terms of where to eat, our favourite was Green Pepper, near Bang Niang Market. This was recommended to us by our holiday rep. My partner had something called a hot plate, which was lots of fried meat. It takes a lot to impress him, but he absolutely loved it. I also had fried banana for dessert, which was pretty good, but also kind of weird. Lucky is also near Bang Niang Market, on the main stretch of road. This restaurant had a relaxed atmosphere, and the food was great too. They also had free Wi-Fi and Chang beer on draft, which my partner appreciated. We also ate at Andaman Seafood, which is based near some of the more remote hotels in Kaolak. We stayed at the Haven Hotel, and this was just a 10 minute walk away. If you want to see the video I made reviewing the Haven, then I'll put the link at the end of the video. Andaman Seafood had a great choice of cocktails, and the servers were particularly friendly. They actually recognised us from having walked past the restaurant the day before. The food was served quickly and was piping hot. We actually ate here twice, as it was tasty, convenient and well priced. Also, top tip, they offer a laundry service which is much cheaper than the hotels. If you continue south, then you reach Kueka. You can't walk here from Kaolak Centre as there's no proper path, so don't make the same mistake I did. Kueka is different to Kaolak Centre as a lot of the shops and restaurants are on the main road. However, this area is much larger, and there's a lot more here. There are a number of hotels, so the chances are that you might be staying closer to Kueka than Kaolak Centre. The shops all sell fairly similar things to those in Kaolak. I bought a bag near Bang Niang Market, and I saw similar bags being sold in most shops. There are so many restaurants to choose from, but the best place we went to was Basaba. The food was great, and there were a lot of tables, so you could probably get a seat quite easily. Another English couple recommended we go to spinach in Kueka. We dropped in after a long, hot walk, so we didn't eat anything, but the views were beautiful, and the drinks were tasty. We also looked at Da Vinci on the main road, but it deserves an honourable mention for being so expensive that we just had a drink and then left. We also ate at Nong Pru, which was about a 15-minute walk down the beach from our hotel. The location of this restaurant is easily the best location we ate at throughout the whole holiday. They have these little wicker huts right on the beachfront, very close to the sea. And honestly, the food was pretty good too. Thailand has so much to do, and despite its rural location, we stayed busy throughout our time in Kaolak. We went on two days of excursions booked through Tui but you can probably book similar or the same experiences either directly or through your own travel operator. On day one, we went on a boat ride through Phang Nagar Bay, which was beautiful. It did rain a bit, but it didn't ruin the day. We started off at Hong Island, being taken around on a kayak with a person paddling for us at the back. He was clearly an expert as he pointed out some really cool things for us. We then went to James Bond Island where you guessed it, they filmed part of The Man with the Golden Gun. There's also a market here. It was nice to say I've been, but as someone who isn't interested in James Bond, it wasn't necessarily on my bucket list. Also, I have to give a special mention to the toilets, which were definitely not up to Western hygiene standards. We had lunch at Samset Nangshi Boutique, which is a hotel with a restaurant at the top, with beautiful views over Phang Nagar Bay. It was family style, and honestly, I wasn't very impressed with the food. However, they were good at catering for food allergies, and they also made special vegetarian dishes for the vegetarians in our group. We then went on to Wat Suan Kuha, 
where you can buy food to feed the monkeys. I didn't buy any food, but others in our group did. So I still got to enjoy seeing the monkeys whilst keeping them reasonably far away from me. Afterwards, we went into the temple, which is set in a cave, which was pretty cool. It was quite small though, so it didn't take long to see everything. Finally, we made a quick stop at Tongpring Waterfall. There were people swimming, but the water was freezing when I dipped my foot in. On to the second day of excursions, and we started off with a visit to Takuapa Market. This is a typical Thai market, selling everything from raw spices to fruit and veg, meat, homemade sweets, and more. The smell was not good, but it was interesting to see a bit of how Thai people live. We then went on to Wasana Elephant Sanctuary, which was an amazing experience. I'll put up some photos as the tour guides acted as photographers for us. The reason for that being we were covered in elephant food, then giving the elephants a mud bath, and finally washing them off. I would say this is an absolute must do, and shout out to the guides who made amazing photographers. We then went on bamboo rafts, which was the most serene experience. It was completely silent, other than the sound of the water as we were being rowed by a local man. We stopped off for coffee and teas made by heating the water over a fire, in the way that hot drinks would have been made in years past. The coffee was quite sweet, and my partner said the same about the tea, which was kind of interesting. We also got to keep the bamboo cups. If I had to recommend three excursions, I would say the kayak ride through Fangnagar Bay, the Wasana elephant experience, and the bamboo rafting. They were all such unique experiences that you just wouldn't get anywhere else. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you liked it, I would really appreciate if you could hit the like button. I'm going to do a separate video on a guide to Phuket, so make sure you press subscribe if you want to see that. If you want to see my review of the Haven Hotel, then you can click here. Or click my face to subscribe if there's no video, as that means the video hasn't come out yet. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!